Thursday, and welcome to Tales from the Flip Side. This is the Modern Playbook Roundtable. Let's go around and introduce everyone. I'm Nico. Hi. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Phil. Awkward. How's it going? Hi, buddy. Hi, I'm Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Samson. <laughs> <laughs> Who do we have in the middle? In the middle square. Joe. What's I'm up, Joe. buddy? I'm Joe. Feels yeah. like the Brady Bunch. Right? I'm yeah. looking up here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. Tony here from Blue Green Artifacts. Happy to be here. All right. And I'm Aaron. And let's go ahead and get Dealer Flipside started. So today we have two books from me and two books from Steve. So I'll start off with my books. I chose Foom number two, oh, uh, Wolverine prototype, right? And then Foom number 10 at a very good condition. I'm not sure what the condition was for uh, the Foom number two, but it was around the same price. So I figured it'd be a pretty good comparison in the discussion. Bill, do you want to kick us off? Sure. So, um, oh, just a thing for the uh, viewers. Um, if you do have that stamp on the back, it is still going to be a blue label, just for these Foom books. But So I would say um, I would go with Foom number 10. It's the hot book. It's got, like, an amazing cover. And I usually like to go for the hot stuff for, like, the magazine type of uh, new category comics that are just hitting the market. So definitely would do Foom number 10 for me nico yeah uh same all day foom 10 uh, actually shocked that a vg plus sold for that much cash um uh, because at least from my the last time i looked at uh ebay there were some uh, real nice copies that you know were available for what I think would be a better deal than that $456 auction, but maybe they're all gone by now. They, it's probably 10 times more expensive than I think it is because I failed to buy a copy. So I'd probably go for food number two, actually. Um, the reason why is I think people are going to start, you know, copies eventually are going to become so out of reach for Hulk 180, 181, X-Men 94, giant size X-Men, you know, the trifecta, right? Or quadfecta, whatever. So anyways, um, I, I think the concept art, you know, even though it's not the same character and all that, but just like the idea of a character, like, I think it's going to be important years from now. Okay. Right, um, yeah. So um, I'm, I'm going to, hands down, Foom 10. I'm a big X-Men fan. So um, yeah, I'm all in on that one. I mean, 450... 456 I see I see that thing reaching way beyond that that price in the near future so definitely a foom 10 has the better cover clearly uh, but foom 2 I like because it just it probably ticks off the people that are like zealots about 180 or 181. And I'm just more pragmatic. I'm like, why can't they both be like, you know, why does it have to be one or the other? I, I don't get into these religious type arguments. Uh, so I think I'll take uh, a Foom to um, uh, just to, uh, uh, yeah, kind of, and I, I do like the points Aaron made about it, about it, about 180, 181 getting out of reach and Foom 2 being more accessible. Sounds like a valid point to me. I, I, you know, I've always had uh, a soft spot for Foom 10. I had it. I sold it. Uh, I always tell myself I'm going to get it again. And uh, damn price keeps going up. Um, it's such an iconic cover. I, I Foom 10 all day long. Yeah, I like this one. Um, I am a huge Mutant fan. That was my first book. Uh, my friends and I, we divvied up like... My friend bought the Avengers, another one bought Spider-Man, I bought X-Men, and we could all read all of them. I, I, I kind of live in the con desert. I have actually never owned either one of these. I really want to. Uh, I, I don't have that big of a preference one way or the other, to be honest. Maybe, I know Foom 10 is a little more of a following. 
I, I'd like to own both of them eventually. Let's go with maybe maybe Foom two now, just because I uh, I feel like it might be a little bit undervalued right now. Cool. All right, and then I was definitely jealous of Carter's pick, so I I was like, we have to, you know. We have to compare it within the, within the round table because I, I know that he posed a question to us on our hangouts. Uh, so I was like, you know, let's see what everyone knows. <laughs> I'm jealous also, by the way, Nico, that you got that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, let's start with Tony. Um, uh, I don't know. This is, these are, it's tough when I want both books and I don't have either one of them. Like, <laughs> Hi again. I don't know. I, I think I like the I like the Wolverine cover a little bit better for whatever reason. Um, that's that's a that's a stupid reason to pick a winner in this game. But same thing. I mean, if I ran across them at a con or anywhere at a decent price, I would I'd love to get either one. I'll lean toward lean toward the Wolverine uh, for now, just for the sake of argument. All right, Steve. Uh, let's see. I think I'll go with the, the Wolverine as well. Um, maybe just because of the title, a mini series, uh, an ongoing series versus a mini series that no one seems to care about, at least uh, not right now. But I don't, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not as marvel -y as you guys. So I don't think I, I really want e either that bad. So, you know, if I found it in a $5 bin, okay. But uh, my life will still be complete if I don't have either one. Final answer. Wolverine. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Wolverine. I, I mean, I have a love and hate relationship with black covers and you know, if I were to buy that, I'll just straight to CGC right away. Um, but I, but that Campbell cover, man, that thing's fire. I mean, throw up that peace sign. I think it'll actually do well on the market in the future since like hip hop, all these covers are blowing up. But yeah, I mean, look at that Wolverine; it's pretty badass. Um, yeah, if you can get that high grade, um, it'll be definitely worth it in the long run. I've definitely seen to market the Wolverine way more than I've seen the Siege 3. So I'm going to have to choose the Siege 3 over the Wolverine. I mean, I'm a Deadpool collector, and I don't have either or in my collection. And yeah, like, I've definitely seen Wolverine on market several times, depending on, like, you know, if it was mid-grade or high-grade. So Siege 3 for me. So I got a I got a long box of Campbell covers. I mean, it's, you know, uh, there's no way in hell I'll be able to get every Campbell cover because there's so many obscure covers and then foreigns. These two have eluded me forever. Which ones did you get, Nico? You got my No, I got the Siege. Carter got the Wolverine. Oh my God. Man, you know you know how I'm feeling? Like Deadpool looks in that Siege cover. Do you want the brunette or do you want the blonde? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, I tell you what, if I had to make a decision and somebody's holding them up right now, man, I'd, I'd go with the siege. I'd go with the siege. You know, I'm thinking too, I mean, it's a, it's white. I think it can take care of it a lot better. I think, you know, I mean, you're taking a big, huge risk with that Wolverine black cover. Yeah, okay. you know, I, mean, I didn't even think of that. You know, I'm just yeah. looking at the cover. I, I mean, I'd buy them raw. I mean, they are so tough to find in high grade. Yeah. All right, Nico, since you were involved in, in this and purchased one, what if the shoe was on their foot? You were at the con before Carter was. If there and wouldn't have been an option. I'd have had both. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for for sure. If I had to if I had to give blood, I would I'd have gotten both. Um, so let me read from Recalled Comics what uh, they said, because he does a better job of explaining the Wolverine one. Uh, the Siege one was absolutely 50 uh, copies of the cover of Blackest Night. Um, so it's the same kind of uh, gimmick or, or uh, whatever you want to call it with Wolverine. It says this issue it could only be obtained by retailers by sending 50 covers from a specific list. 
Initially, the list was very limited, making it too difficult for most retailers to obtain. However, Marvel relented somewhat and expanded the list so more retailers could participate. So then it goes on to say that he believes that they are equally rare uh, and that Wolverine may be, uh, it says, this variant is probably equally rare or rarer than the Siege 3 variant, which had a similar incentive scheme, but returning DC comic covers rather than Marvel. So um, I, I like the savagery of send us DC covers as opposed to sending us uh, back our own covers for sure. And, um, you know, that's the one I wanted forever, right? Was the Siege one um, back in the day. Now, uh, if I could only buy one at the con, I probably would have done the same thing that Carter did and picked up the Wolverine. I, I have the benefit of having looked at, at both uh, copies, and uh, I think Carter's got a problem trying to get a 9-8 on the Wolverine. He might be mad at me for saying that, but there's, uh, <laughs> there's a little imperfection oh, man. in uh, the upper right-hand corner. Now, you know, I don't know, man, like that black cover with all of the craziness, uh, sometimes uh, CGC is just kind when it comes to um, these super rare books. Um, sometimes they're not, uh, but the comics gods giveth and the comics gods taketh away. So, uh, you know, who knows how it'll all shake out. But uh, that's, I, I, I hate to give you kind of a, a non-answer. Uh, if they're slab nine eights, I take the Wolverine. Um, but under the circumstances, I, that Siege 3 was just flawless, which was kind of bizarre. And I kind of like the backstory around the Siege 3 a little bit better just because it came first. They're probably my favorite um, high-end variants. I talked about them so much on Comic Book Wars that Jimmy used to get mad at me. He's like, that fucking book's not going to do anything. We're talking about it. Nobody cares. And I'm like, but I care. Jimmy, I, <laughs> I was still looking, care. I was looking for that, Nico, today. I was like, I'm going to find that and I'm going to show it. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't find it. <laughs> I, th I think I'm going to change my answer because I just realized that it's probably the first appearance of those two girls on that cover. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, right? I mean, so, Nico, yeah, did, you, did you have a giveaway you wanted to announce tonight? <laughs> <laughs> it took like six weeks for me to get the, the uh, winner of the uh, first White Vision, his books. They finally went out in the mail today. I'm terrible with giveaways. <laughs> I had to like throw in a bunch of other books just to kind of like make it right. Like, we'll give them this and this and this. <laughs> um, yeah. Ah, God. So yeah, sorry to belabor uh, my answer, but. All right, Phil, what do you think? Yeah, just for cover alone, I'd go with the Siege 3. I mean, you got the bling, you got the red pool in red with the red do-rag. I mean, it's. I mean, it pops to me. I mean, I don't see them doing another. I don't think they've done an homage to this, right? So they the no. Uh, yes. Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe second prints for issues oh. one and two, and their sketch covers of each of these covers. Yeah. Then there's a a uh, Larry's Comics, uh, Bieber, swipe of the Siege Three cover that's worth like zero dollars. <laughs> um, that probably is a good buy right now, to be perfectly honest. I mean, 30 years from now, somebody is probably going to be really excited about those books. Maybe 10 years from now, I don't know. I mean, yeah, well, okay, thanks for that, guys. Um, but still, I think if I saw both of them on a wall, I'd be like, if I have the money to buy these books, and I'm a Deadpool fan, and these Deadpool like fans are very, very specific, like, I'd be... <laughs> I'd be all over Siege Three, just for the to all that bling and the girls hanging on the his arms and stuff. It's really cool. So, can I ask you guys a question? Since I've got you all um, uh, as like a captive audience here, am I wrong that dollar for dollar these books are better buys than a New Mutants ninety eight nine eight? Yes, it's a better buy. Yeah, I mean, because they haven't gone crazy. They're profoundly rare and i feel like it's the new collectors that are coming in and buying the new mutants 98 that have caused it to god go like 6x that eventually they should figure out about these books and they should be like 5 10 grand or something <laughs> i mean it's always steadily but risen in price right i mean i don't I mean, see how, it how much does a 98 go for on this so well that's the problem is this was back 
um, we talked about this, I think, uh, the last time we were all together. This was back when CGC Signature Series was popping, and everybody wanted to get, you know, 25% added value by having um, their books signed and gold labeled. So the, you can't even buy blue label 9 of either of these books. They're just not for sale. Yeah. I mean, I think they're harder to find. You'd think now that I have one, I would have actually spent the time to look at the uh, census. I haven't. I'm a jack off. But uh, I, I, my, my gut tells me that a ton of these copies are signature series. And the other problem you run into is some of them are raw and signed and nobody wants that damn green label. And, you know, I know that there was the one yeah. guy that was like, why won't you talk about CBCS in the comments? And like, because nobody fucking cares about them. Like I like Steve, I buy uh, CBCS books. Um, but like, that's, you know, they're like, uh, it's like the difference between like Mountain Dew and the other not Mountain Dew. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it ain't well, a Coke Pepsi thing. Like it's a, a Mountain Dew and Squirt. Like McClay loves Squirt. You know, Dennis Barger loves CBCS, but like the masses don't yet. And, you know, I, it's like the Yankees and the Mets. <laughs> you know, also, yeah. Steak is, uh, you get people mad on that one, but yeah. <laughs> I know. I had to say, I'm sorry, guys. Well, also, it's going to take a couple of whales. To start buying CBCS books, and it's and game on. A couple of influencers talk about CBCS, and that's all it's going to take for for that to blow up. Yeah. I mean, so those yeah. raw books, you got to send them to CBCS. But like, how many of you guys have ever submitted a book to CBCS? Be honest. I did once, once, and that was to no. verify a Pineapple Man autograph by. Um, uh, it's a Hawaiian artist. Jesus Christ. Uh, it, the book is so freaking rare. And they sent they sent it back that they couldn't verify it. Wow. Yeah. So that was the last time we even messed with him. Um, yeah. And I consider you guys the best in the game. Yeah, his last name was Compost, and he created Pineapple Man. Wow. And, and in that same um, haul that I got, I got like a 10 autograph uh, cover uh, of uh, the swimsuit, the Jim Lee swimsuit. And J. Scott Campbell signed uh, his name, Jeffrey Scott. That's how old it is. Wow. And it's got Jim Lee on it. But I just wanted that, um, that, uh, that one autograph verified, and they couldn't do it. Pissed me off. Well, if you guys want to talk more about CBCS, the next set of books Ooh, is going to be Good something to talk about. Wow. So here, this is one that I made up. I said, I'll try my hand at this. That's so a hard one, Steve. Got, Jesus. Yeah, you've got New Teen Titans number two, CGC 9.8, first Deathstroke. You've got the newsstand. Uh, both of these came out in 1980, and then you've got Avengers 196, the first Taskmaster, but it's CBCS new 9.8 newsstand. Um, interesting about these, uh, both of these, you know, written by Marv Wolfman, both of these with covers and art by uh, George Perez. Huh. So, who wants to go first? Separated at birth. Yeah, it's good to see. We, we... Thanks for putting a DC book on. <laughs> I don't think we've been wanting to talk about it for a little bit. Um, yeah, this is a Marvel versus DC battle. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, uh, I have vivid memories of when I'm about to buy a book and I don't. And then I, 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 I regret that decision. And I remember being in the, the, uh, with my wife who was shopping and I'm looking at books and, ah, 450, uh, Taskmaster, Avengers 196. I just, no, I don't think so. Um, newsstand. So I, I wish I had done that. That was, you know, whatever, two and a half years ago, back that's, that's two generations ago by now. In, in, in I think that's when Black Widow was supposed to come out. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. So I, I love that book. I've, I've always wanted that book. I don't have that book now. I'm, I'm, this isn't a price where I would get into it. I'd like to own it. The CBCS doesn't matter to me so much um, on something like that. I, I think if you're uh, if you're the kind of collector who's chasing newsstands, I think CBCS versus CGC probably doesn't matter as much to you. It's more about the rarity. Um, but, you know, I think I would actually go with the new Teen Titans with Deathstroke. Um, once DC uh, or, or AT&T or, or whoever's going to be making the movies, once they get their shit together, I, I feel like Deathstroke has a longer shelf life. Um, I know Taskmaster started as a villain, but kind of became an anti-hero and, and even, even, even was a kind of quasi hero for a while. Um, I do feel like though in the DC world, Deathstroke could really, if with the right casting and the right, you know, if all the pieces were put together the right way, um, the Deathstroke could be a force on screen. So I, I guess I would, I think I would go with the Deathstroke. Cool. Thanks, Tony. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I agree with Tony. Um, you know, this is a tough one. I think, uh, I think it's a, it's a long-term, I think I would go with, um, with Deathstroke because um, one, he's badass, And then two, he has his uh, little counterpart or his um, protege, uh, Sonny that um, hopefully she'll pop up in the future. Um, as far as t um, Taskmaster, um, who knows when that Black Widow comes out, but I definitely would, um, you know, buy Avengers, you know, and try to get as much uh, money as you can right now. Because I have a feeling that that book will dip. Um, but Deathstroke all the way, newsstand, and it's a CGC, I mean, I'm not going to hate on CBCS, but, you know, that's just a winner right there, in my opinion. And Deathstroke is just a long-term ca character. Um, I think Taskmaster, I mean, look what happened with his his little miniseries. I mean, we got one character that came out of it, but nobody really paid attention to the story. Um, I've been carrying a lot of mixed reviews about it. So, um I would definitely go with that CGC 9-8 Teen Titans. Hey, Steve, by chance, do you know how much a CGC 9-8 Avengers sold for? Oh, I yeah. Do. Yeah, so, That's, yeah, you you'll notice probably. the date on the Avengers is, is January 29th. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right now you could buy two of those new Teen Titans for the price of one Avengers 196. I don't I don't think there's one for sale below when I say one for sale, one Avengers 196 CGC 9.8 for sale below 3K. Oh wow. But, okay. Yeah. Um Easy. I was gonna let that one sneak by until I <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I you know we don't know when Black Widow is going to come out at this point. You know, I might, I, I might take a gamble and buy the Taskmaster, and you know, crossover grade it to CGC and try to potentially make a little bit more on the short short term. So, but I mean, long term, I could see AT and T or whatever DC doing something with Deathstroke. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be a gambling man and buy the CBCS Avengers 196. <clears throat> I, I, I totally agree with Aaron because if I had to buy a book right now, I would take that Avengers and cross grade it and then flip it. I mean, and, and, and then flip it and get a bigger book. I mean, I, I now if, if it's for holding long term, if, if I'm buying a book just to hold it for long term, then, then I go with the, the teen Titans. But if it's for something, uh, that if you gave me a choice where well, you can do whatever you want with it, well, I mean, I'm like Aaron, I'm a gambling man, and, and I'm going to turn that book into something else. Uh, I'm going to buy a bigger book. And I think that's what we all do. We, we flip to buy bigger books, and we just keep going until we get to a grail, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, 
that's that's kind of the way I see it. Now, Deathstroke, uh, yeah, that that's the original Deadpool, but you know, I mean, you got Snake Eyes, Deathstroke, and Deadpool. Like, which is the coolest one with the two swords in the back? I don't, you know, I mean, who copied you? You know. <laughs> All right, I'll go. Um, so for the new Teen, I would I would go with the new Teen Titans too. I just um, it's just a really big impact character for DC and DC. Uh, yeah. So it's just like either he's going to be in the next animation project or a film or a TV show. Like, like that character is so popular. He's like the Punisher, basically, right? He's for dead, DC he's Comics, dead, he's Deadpool, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A more serious That's Deadpool. <laughs> more serious Deadpool. Okay, so we got that <laughs> comparison too. But it's just like I don't know. I think you got to go with the one that could be a more clear cut, like anti hero. You know, so I go with the the Teen Titans book. Um, hey, I'm curious. What What are you guys? Are you guys happy or or? Pissed that that the uh, the cameo in the DC EU of Deathstroke never amounted to anything. Did you like that that Joe Manganiello little cameo at the at the end of the movie, or are you happy that night? What a waste, man! Like, who wants to see Cyborg, dude? <laughs> <laughs> like, do they not talk to fans? You know, that's the problem. Like. With DC, they never have a plan. They don't put anything on paper. They just go with it. Go with it. Let's see what happens, you know? Uh, like Feige, he draws an outline, and he can tell you what's going to happen in 10 years. DC can't tell you what's going to happen next week. And that's the problem with it. They don't listen to the fans. They don't care. You know, like, and I'm supposed to, like, oh, what a great story with Cyborg. Like, <laughs> That's what this whole cut was about? Like, really? Like, I guess. I guess it's supposed to pull at your heartstrings for Cyborg. Uh, I mean, did you guys feel that? Well, my heartstrings got pulled in, in the other cut uh, with that. Um, I think it was the Russian girl and that story about, you know, that that was that whole thing was just weird, you know. Yeah. It, it seems so extraneous to the plot. Um, so I guess I am uh, without having the books in hand, and you've just got to buy them on the internet, and um, they're at these prices. I mean, if today I could pick up a, a one ninety six nine eight for twelve hundred bucks, I, I, I might roll the dice. Um, it, it looks like July is when we're going to get uh, the Black Widow film. And I think there'll be an opportunity to sell it. I mean, I, look, I, I, I believe in the ability of CBCS to grade books. Steve Borok's a genius. Um, you know, they don't hire bums there. They're unquestionably a legitimate grading service. Um, I also believe in reality, which is that they sell for less than CGC books, which is why some of the books to CGC. Long term, I, I think I concur with everybody else on the dang panel. Uh, Deathstroke's the character. I, I liked the Joe, I'm going to butcher his last name. Say it one more time for me. <laughs> Man Mangiello? Manginello. Manginello. My, my father right now has just shed a tear. I've lost all of my Italian bota fides from his side of my family, but uh, <laughs> they're just gone. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I liked uh, his iteration of Deathstroke. And um, I think there is uh, the rumblings and, and ruminations of uh, kind of like a, we want that Deathstroke um, in a TV show on HBO Max or a film or, or something uh, percolating. So yeah. Um, in the long term, New Teen Titans number two seems like a smart book to be going out and trying to buy. I also know that um, there are not a lot of raw high-grade copies left. So uh, if uh, I'm trying to sub uh, a raw book and get a 9-8, um, I better get on my knees and, and pray to whatever God I believe in and ask for a miracle because uh, I don't see a lot of that happening these days. Aaron, Aaron did you weigh in? 
Yeah, yeah. I went with the uh, gambling for okay. Avengers 196. Yeah. Uh, okay. Just want to make sure before I revealed some key information. Oh. Ooh, here it comes. Here it comes. Eight hundred. So the new Teen Titans two. There's eight hundred and four nine point eights graded at CGC. With the Avengers one ninety six, there's only two hundred sixty nine point eights graded. Jesus, interesting. Wow. So now overall, there's five thousand four hundred eighteen graded ver, graded slabs of ntt2 and just over 3000 of avengers 196 wow. now this is where things get uh, even more interesting for avengers 196 there's 124 cbcs 9.8 newsstands there is only one 9.8 it's this one wow now if you look at the direct, Jesus. Yeah. Now, look, if you look at the direct side of CBS, CBCS and the Avengers 196, there's 88 directs graded. There's zero 9.8s with CBCS. Hmm. Then there's an, another 119 that are, aren't specified whether they're direct or news, newsstand, but there's only six 9.8s. So what this means is at best so far you have a, only a three percent chance of getting a 9.8 with cbcs you have an 8.6 percent chance with cgc now i know this is just one example but could this be one of the another reason why folks go to cgc do they in the back of their minds, are they going, I submitted some books to CBCS. I did not get the 9.8 that I was aiming for. Well, the, the theory has always been that, that CBCS grades a lot harder. That's always mm -hmm. been, been the theory. I mean, I, I was telling Aaron, I had a couple of nine sixes and I cross graded and they came back nine eights. Yeah. And I, I was like, okay, like I'm not, I'm not going to call you back and tell you you made a mistake, and it, it's supposed to be a nine six, you know. But that's all I've ever heard is that CBCS's grading is strict. Great but, point, Joe, and it, it makes me think of our, our friend Mr. Long Shorts that likes to say nine point sixes are the best buying opportunity in the market, and maybe we amend that to say there he is. I was just talking about you, Ben, saying how you say 9.6 are the, are the best buying opportunity in the market. Maybe that should be amended to say CBCS 9.6s are the best buying opportunity in the market because I was just going through an analysis of these two books. And, well, at least with Avengers 196, you only have a 3% chance of getting a 9.8. That, that's um, the smartest stuff I've heard all, all day. Gotcha. Yeah. If, if I'm going to buy a book with a chance of getting a 9.8, I'll go buy a 9.6 CBCS because I know they grade it harder to crack it open and, and send it in. Not just right. uh, we want to press it, you know. Sure. I wouldn't want to take a uh, – just let them cross grade it because, they you know, they could get lazy over there. But I know that it's a high-grade book. I mean, basically, they're both near mint, nine six nine eight. They're both near mint. One's just yeah. nearer to mint than the other, you know? Is it yeah, true? Yeah, I mean, I, I think nine sixes are the fattest pitch in the game by far, right? I mean, listen, these books are nearly perfect in every way, and um, and they shouldn't be trading at a 50% discount to the nine eights in most cases for moderns. I'm not talking about for silver or when it's a hell of a lot harder to pull nine eights, but when when every modern, you know, or, or most of the census is 9.8, a 9.6, in my opinion, just really shouldn't be selling for that. So particularly for super rare books, I'd be grabbing 9.6s all day long because half of them probably could qualify as 9.8s. Um, I, I just think it's, when you look back on it, you're going to wish that you'd gobbled up these 9.6s at these deep, deep discounts. They're, ne they're never going to catch 9.8s, obviously, but I, the gap is going to close. I, I'm pretty confident about that. 
is it true? Because I've only been slabbing books for about four or five years, but I understand that uh, whatever eight, 10, 12 years ago, CGC was they were more lax than they are today, especially in terms of these copper bronze age books. Uh, it seems like uh, everybody I talk to now who's sending in a book from this era, from Avengers 196, something in the you know early mid 80s. You're not getting nine eights back anymore. No, I mean my most that, you guys recent submission that included a lot of 80s books. I think I got one out of maybe the ten I sent in, a nine eight, and it, that was that was soul crushing. Um, yeah. See so, now, uh, now yeah. I don't feel like an idiot because I picked up this nine four newsstand, white pages. Uh, CBCS, nice. I'm gonna, this, I'm gonna crack this bastard open. There you go. I'm yeah, so both of these J. Scott Campbell goodness, Scott <laughs> <laughs> Campbell goodness. Look at that. Can you can you guys see that? Let me see. Yep. They're... So one's a this one's a nine six. God damn it! There. <laughs> Sorry. So one's a nine six. And the other one, don't ask me how much I paid for them. I got them cheap, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Tony, in response to your question, I think uh, when people try to suggest that there are, like, these bright line rules for comics, I think it's just generally an oversimplification. Um, but uh, I think there's a lot of factors that kind of, like, work uh, in unison to get that kind of – uh, feeling among people, right? So one, um, if you're first to market, that's not the right term. If you're first to send a, like a book to CGC, you know, you just do better. They don't have a lot of specimens to compare it to. Um, I, I think they kind of treat you right. Uh, I really do. Um, I think you get the benefit of the bounce. Now, um, you know, there's certainly the outliers, those books that have like color rub or, or, um, the ASM 361, the, um, that little, uh, uh, printer grab by the bottom staple, uh, that over time they, or the miswrap that over time they tend to be kinder and gentler to because they see it appear on so many books. You know, one thing the last time I sat down with, uh, Matt Nelson it, that he said was, look, there's just less raw specimens of high grade books um, that are being submitted. I mean, it's just, you know, all of the highest grade specimens have already been encapsulated. We've seen them all, we've got them all. So I think kind of like all of those things sort of work in unison. And, um, you know, frankly, after they've given so many nine eights out, I think they're like tough goalies, which okay. I appreciate, uh, even if it's not intentional. I think they're like, yeah, I've seen enough uh, New Mutants 98s, like, no, it's a 96. This is wrong. This is wrong. Where, you know, five years ago, you might have gotten the benefit of the bounce and then been like, eh, what the hell? Sure, 98. Uh, and not to say that that's, like, intentional, that just at a subconscious level, you know, I think that happens um, more so in the beginning and less so over time. That's my gut on that as somebody who's sub books on and off for, Christ, I don't know, almost a decade now. Yeah, that yeah it's, it's a great observation. I, I do feel that's actually totally the fact. When I, when I sub a book that there are hardly any on the census, I feel like they almost always come back 9-8s. If I'm subbing a book that's really, really hot, you know, the prices are going crazy, it, it, it just feels like they're a hell of a lot tougher. It'll come back as a 9-6. I can't see a damn thing wrong with it, but that's just where, 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 you know, what, 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 they, what they tagged it with. And, you know, maybe, maybe that's purely my emotional reaction to it but it just feels like for the books that have a lot of uh, a lot of copies on the census and are particularly hot they just tend to get harder and harder over time but um i mean the thing that's kind of like hilarious about the 9896 uh bit is human beings are subjective right i mean you can pretend as much as you want to suggest that there's some sort of scientific analysis, but like 
that's not really accurate. <laughs> okay, you have scientific criteria, and then you have a subjective person who's got human emotions and you know uh, biological eyes. And I mean, we're not computer robots that are grading these books. And it, I, mean, I mean, come the fuck off. Right? Book, <laughs> right? And, the, and the, that, that's what blows me away, man. They're literally both virtually perfect books. Right. I mean, they're not tens. Let's be care let's be clear. Tens are perfect books, right? So they're not tens, right? Nine eights and nine sixes. It could be come down to how many beers the guy had the night before, right? Um, that that's making the difference there. So um I'm a buyer of nine, and I know and I'm a buyer because everybody else is a seller of nine sixes right now, but I think that's gonna change, right? I mean, I'll happily take that fifty percent off discount and um and, 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 and be happy to have it. Um, but yeah. uh, I, I think it just changed for me today after doing this research and discovering this this uh, CBCS. I, I think my new daily eBay. I think I'm only gonna I'm gonna get rid of all my other searches and just have a search CBCS nine point six. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, there's <laughs> so there's I, dude. I used to comb uh, eBay for CBCS uh, books. And there are fewer listed than you would think yeah. um, every day. I mean, it's you can do it, particularly when you kind of specify like bronze, gold, silver. Um, you know, it, it's doable. But there's a market there for sure uh, and some opportunity. I, I think. Um, I think that that one thing I've seen is that uh, brick and mortar stores uh, I, I've seen surprisingly a, a lot of CBCS uh, uh, brick and mortar stores that don't sell online use CBCS. Th that's just a local observation. We've got a store in West Virginia that sends to fucking Australia to Hulu or something. Oh, Halo. 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 Yeah. Holly. Halo. Yeah. I was like, what in the hell is going on here? Is this real life? Right. Yeah. And he was just telling me all about it. He was a big fan. And um, that was his thing. All right, I've got another Marvel versus DC for you guys. Last one. Oh, great. Ooh. With a curveball. So we've got Christ, Young man. Avengers, CGC SF 9.8, um, first print signed by Jim <clears throat> Chung. I, I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation. And then we have DC Comics Presents 26, CGC SS 9.8, Marv Wolfman. The young DC team versus the young Marvel team with signature series to complicate matters. <laughs> what do you guys think? Wow. Who wants to go first? I'll, I'll start um, since I, I went last last time. Uh, team Marv Wolfman, uh, no regrets. I feel like I've been set up by Steve to pick two DC books back to back. <laughs> <laughs> the DC fans are going to love me. I uh, I love Marv Wolfman. I got to meet Marv Wolfman. He is a gentleman, a scholar, and um, carries the torch for uh, guys like Bill Finger, Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, uh, the legends, um, responsible for the best, uh, the best in, in, of the stuff that we've got today. And um, I, I just really, really um, appreciate and admire his work. I like Young Avengers books. I've got Young Avengers books. I don't even know who the fuck Jim Chung is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't, I guess it's a nice cover or something. Uh, Marv Wolfman, the legend. Final answer. Aaron, what do you think? Oh, man. Um... With Teen Titans, I definitely see a big potential upswing with that, especially with the popularity of Red X now. Like that's definitely put you know DC back on the radar for a lot of people. So I'm gonna have to agree with Nico with the DC presents Com comics presents 26. Um, and then, how often does Marv Wolfman sign anymore? Yeah, I so, drove I mean, like I, all the way to dude. I drove like eight hours just so that I could be at a con with him. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I feel like that signature is going to be harder and harder to get 
especially now and then even with stuff opening back up sooner like i I don't know i I don't see it being available uh you know him being available for signatures so i'm gonna have to go with uh dc percents 26 final answer all right samson what do you think well um you know i'm gonna go against nico and aaron on this one but i you know i really i really believe in um in these new T Titans, I mean, they're heating up and everything, but for some reason about DC, you know, they just, uh, it's just, sometimes they just let me down. Um, and it's just frustrating, but, um, you know, with red X, you know, um, coming out, uh, I, I think it has potential to, you know, appreciate in value at the end of the day, you know, the young Avengers, it just keeps on, escalating and the prices are just they just keep on moving up and uh with kate bishop in in play this book has more going for it because it has a movie as kate bishop has how many how many characters are in there now i mean how many first appearances are you going to get out of that that book um i just don't see that book slowing down anytime soon so i would actually just go for the young avengers it's a it's a great long-term play i feel that dc i mean they just got to get their their shit straight <laughs> you know and, and get everything in order to be honest um I'm, I'm not knocking them but i mean look what look what marvel is doing right now <laughs> they got everything right they got everything in order this book you know it used to be a hundred dollar book now now it's three hundred dollars I mean, what are we going to see? $500? So I guess for me personally, um, I would definitely go for that 9A, even a blue label over that that yellow um, Wolfman signature, to be honest. But that's just me. All right. Put, putting the flag in there with the blue label. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, what say you? Oh, um, you were drinking. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I didn't see this. I didn't see your picks beforehand, but but literally, this is sitting right next to me. Really? <laughs> I got to speak as a seller because that's mainly what I'm doing in comics right now is trying to pick things up that I can uh, sell and 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 pay a few bills with. So I'm I'm going to go with the Young Avengers all day on this one because I like Teen Titans. I. I I'm not a huge DC guy, but uh, growing up, if I read anything in DC, it was Teen Titans. I think they're, they're what's the word? Neat. I, I never thought they were cool. Uh, <laughs> they're interesting. They were more interesting to me than the, the iconic, you know, uh, the gods of DC, I guess. Um, but the... The idea of the Teen Titans beyond like a, a, an okay TV show, which is kind of what they have now. Um, they might have another iteration. To think that DC could get their shit together enough to the point where, where you could actually get to a Teen Titans movie that would be quality doesn't even seem like reality. I, I, I mean, it, to me, that seems like 6, 10, 15 years down the road. Whereas... Marvel is clearly putting the next 10 to 15 years into that book on the top. Like all those characters, that's what we're going to be seeing on our screens at home on, on the big screen. Um, so I, I think that one is going to grow a lot more than, than that DC, nothing against Marvel Wolfman. Uh, no problem. I apologize, Nico, but, but I'm going to go young Avengers all day. All right. Joe, what do you what do you think? Oh, well, you know, you're two different two different ends of the spectrum, right? So sure. Well, uh, you you want it, it? You know, most of us collect things, right? We don't just sell all day long and don't uh, have anything yeah. that we want for our own PC. I mean, uh, if uh, you know, I appreciate Nico and and uh, being a huge fan and 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 going after going after uh, 
somebody that he loved, you know, I can appreciate that. But when you see what that, that, uh, that Avengers goes for right now, and you throw a yellow label on it in three months, you'll be able to double your money. And then you could go back and buy that Marv Wolfman. It's probably something else, you know? Um, uh, I mean, I think we all want to, uh, we, we want to enjoy collecting and we want to collect some things, but when it's obvious, you can, you can make some money very quickly just by, by, let me tell you, I picked up a young Avengers a month and a half ago for 300 bucks in a nine, eight, that book's a thousand dollars right now. So when it, there's an obvious, obvious, no brainer, it, it's picking up that young Avengers, uh, or maybe buy both. <laughs> okay, well, before I, pass it, before I pass it to Ben, I'm going to add a little more information here, which oh. is the last seven nine non-signature series sales of Young Avengers 9.8s have been about $1,200, give or take. With wow. DC Comics Presents, they this it, it's usually average, 9.8s have usually averaged less than $700, but... The 90 day average is 1,072. And the last five non SS uh, sales have been $1,000, $1,400, $1,600, $1,500, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000,
So I go with the history um, and importance of the of out of these two comics, and go with DC Comics Presents twenty six, and just and just hold it for, you know, maybe it could be just only a couple years. It could be just a couple months. You never know because these these people who are just coming in, they'd be like, okay, you know, I see that the ceiling's going a little bit too high for Marvel. I'm gonna slide over and allocate some my budget to buy some DC blue chips and, and BA or SA, you know? And that's my yeah. pick. All right. Well, you said, you know, you, you, you agree with me, but I actually, I haven't given my answer yet. So here, here's my answer. <laughs> I assumed. <laughs> my, my answer. Now, one thing I didn't tell, tell you guys is that there's over 1,250 Young Avenger 9.8s. Um, there's only 518 DC Comics Presents 9.8s, um, of which 77 are uh, signature series. Now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give two answers. So um, one is my heart is in New Teen Titans. I mean, it's it's the thing I, I love most in DC, and Marv Wolfman can't say enough great things. I mean. Between working for Marvel and DC, we I don't think uh, I think few people realize how much uh, how many characters and teams and concepts he created. It's it's just enormous. So my heart says DC Comic Presents, but my wallet says Young Avengers number one. Um, and the, my reasoning is. Um, the the number of first appearances there that haven't hit, hit peak uh, value yet. Now, DC Comics Presents, I don't think anyone mentioned that it's also not only the first appearance of New Teen Titans, it's the first appearance of Raven, Starfire, Cyborg, um, if you want to count uh, Changeling as, as, as Beast Boy, you know, there's that too. But you know, we've seen, you know, the Teen Titans Go animated series and the animated movie. We've seen, you know, I think streaming that Titan series is the best thing out there. Um, and still, you know, these, these uh, DC Comics Presents, you know, only in the past five sales have has been approaching 1500 and above. Um, I think the Young Avengers still has room to grow, and that's coming from the guy who's who's champion champions number one. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I I don't think you can go wrong. I, I I see Young Avengers one still doubling, tripling, quadrupling. Uh, I think there's a lot of room to grow. Um, DC Comics presents. I'm I'm not so sure you you'll see that type of appreciation. So. My final surprising answer, please DC fans, don't come with me at pitch with pitchforks, is Young Avengers one. So um, I'm going to hand it back to Aaron to close close this uh, to close this out. All right. Well, thank you everyone for playing Dealer Flipside. It's been a pleasure. Tune in next week.